And now let's get into. The news. Stop the music. <laughs> it's time for news. I pause more and more each time. I love it. <laughs> let's head into the newsroom. Jeff Sills, what's going on, my friend? Well, you know, if people understood from the radio perspective that that long pause is something that drives you nuts, that that adds even more fun to that. So Yeah, that's called dead air. And if you ever hear it on a radio station, there's a radio guy somewhere running from the shitter to try to push the button. <laughs> that's what he's doing. What's up, Jeff? All right. To start off the news this week, we have a video that I will provide to our wonderful FPV guest. This is a drone tour of the famous Morgan Car Factory production line. I like these fly-throughs, but only if they're done well. Dave, what is the ideal quad for a fly-through? A uh, little Cinewhoop. I mean, it depends on how small you need it to be for the job. You can go all the way to 6S and fly big old ducted whoops with giant cameras on them, but uh, they've been getting smaller and smaller where they're running around with little naked GoPros. Are we still 95s. doing that? Do, are we still doing the naked GoPros? Is that still a thing? Or if I'm not. I need that warranty, man. I break stuff. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Can you take your naked GoPro to Best Buy if it's broken? No, you, you literally got to hacksaw it to cut it in half to get the thing naked. Oh, I mean, okay. It's like a chastity belt you got to bust off. Right. But, you know, the smaller the quad, the tighter the spaces you can get in. Yeah. And that's true with anything, I guess. Ladies. If you want to get right up in somebody's face and have somebody catch it, you probably don't want to be using a five-inch quad. No. But for this, would you say the pilot is moving around or is he in one spot? He's not moving. He's sitting in one spot. Okay. Because these some of these larger museums that I've seen with the fly-throughs, like the Mercedes Museum, uh, they put them in a wheeled like office chair and they have a, a pilot pilot, like where the dude pushes them around so that the signal... I've seen that too, yeah. but I don't think that's that common. I think no. most of the time you just get a real good position, point your patch and your Omni, and do it. The one thing about this one that kind of impressed me was the fact that you would think driving or you know flying through a production factory, a workshop with all that metal, all that equipment, all the all the machines around, that there would have been an interference that would have prevented that. But uh, it looked like he did a great job getting through that. That's the their historic uh, facility on Pickersleigh Road. I'm always impressed with how they can convince everybody to ignore the drone. Because <laughs> you, <know? laughs> yeah. you know it's like... Right by their head, you know. Ignore the drone! <laughs> these one these one takes aren't first takes. They're... Uh, oh, no. You know, practiced and practiced right. and practiced right, right, and right. everybody gets in queue. Wow, that's really, really cool. That is really cool. Yeah, I thought you guys would like that. Thank you. All right, Thank so you, Jeff. You're most welcome. Next in the news, we have the eVTOL aircraft designer Autoflight released recently their video footage of their Prosperity One aircraft doing a first transition from vertical to horizontal flight as part of its flight test regimen. Mm, and here's where I ask the question, would you ride it? Because there's not a person in there now, right? They're flying it remotely. Yeah, this is this is flying remotely. Um, this unmanned test took place in Jiangsu province in China last month, reached an altitude of 490 feet and had a forward airspeed of 123 miles per hour. So let me know in the chat, would you ride this? I'm 123 miles an hour? Are they going to give me acro? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to have a range of 155 miles. That's the development uh, of it. Um, and the first flight of this one particular uh, version was in October of last year. So it's still part of the development, but uh, this was proof of concept that they had the ability to transition from uh, hover to forward flight and then maintain a speed. Is this going to be piloted by the person on board or is this going to be a mission planned kind of thing? My guess is it's going to be a bit of both. My guess is it's going to be one of these ones that's sort of an automated flight for people but if you you know if you have a i guess a need or a purpose to be able to control mm. it then they would probably be able to no, provide that i'm guessing it's not going to be both it'll be one or the other because they have to set things up for it but uh, i would i wouldn't fly in any of these if i wasn't piloting it i, I mean it looks like a real aircraft <laughs> yeah that's the thing all these things they look great and futuristic but 
are they airworthy? You know, like yeah. there's not a whole lot of wing there. If the uh, engines give out, you're not going to be gliding very far on those little skinny things. And I would hope that they would have a parachute that would come out. You know, like in some of these little Cessnas, they do. They carry a parachute for the plane. I want one of those. The, the parachutes that rip their wings off when you pull them? Yes. And a giant spring, and I want to land on a bunch of cardboard boxes. That's the only way I would ride it. And the Wiley Coyote's going to come out with a little sign. <laughs> that, that's right. Jeff, what are you doing, man? Jeff! Oh, uh, Just preparing for the next story. Uh-oh. What is it? I'll just go ahead and tell you as I prepare. Yeah, what, what is it? The French military is exploring the use of a wing-flapping bird drone. A wing-flapping bird drone? I think I have footage from that. The, okay. The, the, the bird? Is this the, is this the wing-flapping uh, bird drone? No. Is this, this the, flappy, the bird that you're, bird. flappy bird that you're talking about? No, that would not be the flappy bird that I'm talking about. <laughs> Biofly is the uh, company that has recently signed a deal with France's Air Ministry of the Armed Forces uh -huh. to develop the use of a flapping bird drone. Okay. Um, I don't understand why everybody one in the military thinks that it would be better to have a drone that flaps, but there you go. Propellers are going out of style. Yeah, and it's a <laughs> it's a carbon fiber wonder. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. And it does look exactly like um a bird. What is it? What is it, Jeff? What's the word? What is the word? What is the word, Jeff? It's a bird. It is a bird, isn't it? Oh, well, everybody's heard yeah. about the bird. Go, Daddy! Bird, 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 well, a bird is a word. Well, a bird, 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 well, a bird's a well. Well, a bird, 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 well, a bird is a word. Well, a bird, bird. You're not dancing, Dave. Well, a bird, 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 well, a bird is a word. Well, a bird, 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 but bird's a well. Jeff, you all right, bud? Oh, yeah. Okay. Next time I need a little bit less Coke. <laughs> or more. All right. Coca-Cola we're talking about. Yeah. Just, just anyway. The ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So next in the news, we have some footage. This is from uh, a recent very deadly mudslide in Brazil. Uh, more than 90 people have been killed as after heavy rainfall triggered flooding and landslides in the area of Petropolis, Brazil. Uh, and this is footage that comes from uh, one of the drones that they have there uh, that the news agency runs. But uh, the devastation is pretty extreme. And if you, you know, if you're familiar with Brazil, they have these, you know, entire towns that just go up the sides of hills. And so yeah. if a landslide comes down, it just takes, you know, all the houses with it. Wow. That's good drone footage, but it's very sad. Very sad. But on a lighter note, yeah, uh, we recently had a story about rescuers who saved a dog using sausages, mm -hmm. and those particular rescuers have run an award. Um, the volunteers that rescued this dog recently were presented from PETA the Den Mead, or was it the Hero to Animals Award for Creativity and Initiative? Uh, and well deserved for that matter. I mean, <laughs> if you need to get a dog out of a out of a predicament, you know, just Dangle food in front of its right. face. Right. Look at that little muffin. That poor little muffin was out there. Didn't know where to go. All lost. And then here comes a sausage. I hope Saved the word has an actual sausage on it. <laughs> what? I hope the word has a sausage on it. Oh, it's got to. Yeah, the, like the Golden Sausage Award or something. Oh, no, wait. That's something different. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I know what you mean, Dave. Yeah. Back to you. Uh, you lost me. Yeah, I got you. I'm right here. <laughs> All right, so next in the news, a farm in Queensland, Australia, can be the home of the first flower in the world planted by a drone. crop, to the best of our knowledge, is the first sunflower crop planted entirely by drone. Wow. Sunflowers need to have fairly consistent spacing uh, to grow correctly, and they also normally get incorporated quite accurately. So these were some of the challenges that we had to overcome whilst planting them by drone. Pretty cool, man. That's uh, I love uh, unique uses for drones like that. Yeah, and you know that's the whole that whole field. You know, forty forty five thousand something acres or something was just that's incredible yeah. to see that done. 
All right. So next in the news, I have footage uh, from some surf videos. But what's interesting is this drone footage captures some people having some absolutely huge wipeouts. Oh, my goodness. Oh, scary stuff. Aren't they a little bit close together? Can't they land on each other? Dave, can you surf? Uh, not like that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not many of those got out of that wave. <laughs> those are a little out of my uh, my scope there. Wow. Where is this, Jeff? This is uh, uh, Waimea Bay. And where's that? <laughs> I believe that in Hawaii. Is it? Okay, I don't know. Well, oh, it's a, throwing, Bay, it? okay, <laughs> it's a Waimea Bay, is it? Okay, it's a Waimea Bay. What was the barometric pressure that day, uh, Jeff? <laughs> None of your business, Ken. <laughs> oh, you know, but you just don't want to say. I see. No, I'm not going to tell you nothing. You're holding all your info Hawaii, closer Hawaii to this. is the only place I've ever seen 20-foot waves just, like, raise up at the beach and crush people. Yeah. And yeah, Waimea no Bay usually gets these waves due to uh, swells that are caused by, you know, like, really bad storms. So there's a lot of thunderstorms that are developing these huge waves which of course draws surfers like moths to a flame you know so they just they can't not be there even if they're gonna crash and wipe they're gonna crash and wipe and have fun doing it yeah i i used to body surf a lot in uh, ocean city new jersey and i i thought a big wave was like 10 feet Th <laughs> those would those are backbreakers yeah all right so next in the news we have hb 1619 or a new bill to be passed to ban the use of drones and unmanned aircraft over private property. This knucklehead. Oh, my God. The Federal Aviation Administration says more than 800,000 drones are registered in the United States. More than half of those are for recreational use. Drones have become so common that one state representative from our area says it's time for a law that restricts their use over private property. State Representative Dean Van Schoik filed a bill that would prohibit an individual from taking photos or video of someone's property without consent. The bill, which passed out of committee, follows legislation in previous years that restricted drones over prisons and some outdoor venues. Basically, what it's doing is protecting people <laughs> on wait, their property. Wait for it, Dave. A, a reasonable wait. expectation of some amount of privacy in their wait. open field. And that uh, they shouldn't be um, have to worry Hold about on. somebody flying a drone over <laughs> taking pictures or videos streaming what they're doing on their property. Doesn't he look like Sam the Snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Doesn't he? Colonel Sanders. No, he looks he looks exactly like the snowman guy. Yes. Dean Van Schmuck, or whatever his name is. Uh, he wants to rule the skies. Yeah. But he even sounds like him. Look at that. He even sounds like that snowman guy. Some of you are too. He had that like that whistle, that like nose whistle when he talked. <laughs> I mean, we can knock his appearance, but what he's doing is just real douchey. And they keep trying to do this, you know? They keep trying to yeah. And, and it keeps getting knocked down, thankfully, but uh, I want everybody to be aware that this kind of thing is happening in various states uh, all They're the time. They're grandstanding. This guy's just trying to get elected or reelected. Yep. Yep. He's yeah. Gonna... Yeah, and well, that, once once the FAA gets wind of this or, or somebody you know with, with the legal ease to understand the, the FAA's control over this, they will put a squash to this very quickly. They will knock quickly, it down. I'm sure. Yeah. It, and, you know, once the sun comes out really bright, he's just going to melt away. Uh, okay. <laughs> Too much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it? Uh, pay two hundred dollars or go directly to jail and <laughs> see the Monopoly guy. Right. If you, if act on a serious note, if you have any problems like this, if you have any legal issues, uh, call our buddy Ryan LaTourette. Get him at that email address. He has uh, great drone legal advice for you. Back to you. All right, uh, the next story, unfortunately, I have lost the link to. Oh, no. I'm not understanding why. Oh. So, uh, I'm oh, not yeah, sure it's, what it's, was... it's It's about the, the, the Flappy Bird. No, it's not no, about wasn't... the Flappy Bird. Oh, yeah, it's hold on, else, hold but... on, hold on. I'm, I'm being told my, my my producer that doesn't exist. Yes. 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 Uh, it's uh, just a break right now for the ladies. And a punishment for Jeff for losing the story. That's right. Yeah. You can't unsee it. But there it is. Can't, can't there unsee it. There it is. Oh, don't be jealous, ladies. He is not available. 
All right. So the next story is then. Find something sharp that... and <laughs> <laughs> right in the old eye. I need to boil my brain. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what's, what's the next, next story that I have then is the army in India is using drones to supply COVID jabs. Um, they have, uh, I guess, a great new method of getting the the jabs to their troops. Uh, yeah. Well, they're using drones for all kinds of things. So why not? Yeah. You know, <laughs> delivering this way to to hard hard to reach uh, areas. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, you know this this would, this would be uh, to those mountain mountainous regions along the upper border, but it's uh, that drone. That's a pretty hefty drone. It is. Did so you lose all your stories, Jeff? Did you lo- did your computer crash? <sighs> Are you no, okay? <laughs> I for some reason the, the 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 previous story it lost the link. Oh, okay. You don't so, print them out and put them on your teleprompter? Yeah, like a real I print news them out man. And put them on my teleprompter, and I've got you know the backups of the backups of the backups, and I lost it. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next in the news, out of Mills County, Iowa, a drone equipped with night vision was recently used to catch uh, a suspect Friday morning. Vince Crow of Seattle, drive. Washington. A short chase ensued. The driver then ditched the vehicle, ran off into a field, and that's when Montgomery County officials deployed their drone and spotted the suspect using night vision. Deputies arrested the man without incident. He is identified as Vince Crow of Seattle, Washington. In the vehicle, deputies say they found heroin, marijuana, oxycodone pills, and meth, and Crow is now facing several charges for drug violations along with several counts for traffic violations. <laughs> so, I wonder why he ran away. That's quite the menu of items there. <laughs> Meth and a speeding ticket. Right, yeah, yeah. but you think, man, I, I I, got by all this, this drug charges, but what? What? I was speeding? Wow. <laughs> yep. And your tail lights out. Your t- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, inspection's, when, inspection's when, not you out. You know what? Yeah. Once you go to jail, somebody's going to remove your tail light for sure. Thank you. I'm here all week. Try the veal. Tip your waitress. All right. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Last in the news, and uh, my personal favorite for the evening, is a new robot companion helping seniors shop. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Gita is the first of a kind at carrying uh, following robots. I think following is the key word here. Because it's a robot that instead of something you step on or a vehicle that you step Are on, these it's the robots literally just following you. Yeah. It does it very well. It uses one of the most advanced technology. But its purpose is just to basically help you to walk more, help walk uh, free from goods because you can carry goods inside Jita. And the purpose is just to help people to walk more and, and take advantage of innovation in our daily things, just like walking for uh, through town. <laughs> yeah okay that that's going to terrify grandma that is just going to terrify <laughs> for, forget it aren't aren't older people afraid of technology ah uh, you know there are some that are and some that aren't i don't know honey this- the robot is following me it's supposed to honey yeah but it's fu- it's got my purse you put the purse in it honey it's stealing my purse ah <laughs> right i mean it's eating the upholstery. <laughs> right. Get the robot off the rug, Henry. I mean, it's this is this is not a good idea. Am I wrong? Right? Can you everybody imagine their grandparents? Right. Hey, at least it's not flying, right? I mean, can you imagine if they tried to do this with a drone and it's oh, three right. props in the air chasing grandma around <laughs> right. the house? Right. We get in grandma's. There's you got blue hair in the in the, you, your blue hair in the props again, Gladys. <laughs> But let me go ahead and let me go. I'm going to play this video again with, with just with different music. So um, this this might. <laughs> Where is that a comma? That thing is going to get a mind of its own. It's going to become self-aware. It's going to steal all of Grandma's insure. It's going to steal all of her heart medicine. That's just terrifying. Maybe it's a cultural thing in another country, but not here. Not here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how well that's going to take off, but it was uh, intriguing that they had something that small with uh, the ability to follow a target. So, but it has can to it, be within. A can s- it handle like fifty beers? Can you stuff it full of beer and ice, and it's going to follow me <laughs> now, around? Now there you go. T- 
tailgating. There you go. The tailgating uh, cooler robot. Now that's an idea. Just put ice in it. Is you'll sell some rolling coolers now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That'll work. Well, that's a good idea. Never yes. carry your cooler again with the auto cooler. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, it's Jeff. It's a force multiplier. It is a force <laughs> multiplier. Thank you, Jeff, very much for the news. You are most welcome, sir. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. We should probably mention remotepilot101.com. Isn't it a great place? Great place. It is a great place. Tell us about your place, Jason. So Remote Pilot 101, no one has uh, prepared more Part 107 pilots than us. And you'll be pleased, uh, those of you who are current customers now, uh, you're going to be experiencing version three uh, and a brand new learning management system in about two weeks. So the best just keeps on getting better. RemotePilot101.com. Use co promo code HERON18. Which, by the way, Ken, yeah. I can't brag on you enough. When we search promo codes, you, you know me, I'm, I'm all about our marketing and everything else. HERON18 is the most used promo code. Your people listen to you, Ken. Yay, thank Seriously. you, people. I appreciate that. And you, cool. you've been very busy updating the lessons, too, because there's... Uh, there's not a... Every video has gotten a facelift. There's 76 videos in there. Every single one has gotten a facelift. The course has gone from um, nine hours to almost 12 hours now. There's just so much new content. We're always trying to um, innovate, push new content. Now with all um, the recurrent tests changing so much, we're, we're like, wow, we just launched our new course. We need to fix it now. So we're we're back to that. I was just reviewing some of the stuff our writers sent over earlier for some of the content. And there's some more great stuff coming out here soon as well. And uh, you take actual questions that uh, test takers give you uh, and kind of incorporate those in the in the quizzes too, right? So they're actual yep, FAA yep. We, uh, questions. We have a ton, a ton of data on that, no doubt. So yeah, and I always share, you know this, Ken. We have, I call them the boot camps at the end where I share this is a question you're going to see on your knowledge test. Let's, let's not memorize it. Let's understand the why behind it. Uh, but just to prepare them for the knowledge test. You know this, though, Ken. I want you to be safe in the real world. My mission isn't just to pass a test. I want you safe when you're out there flying FPV, whatever it is, so you can be uh, a light and be a mentor to everybody else that's out there wondering about what this new drone space is. Even though it's not that new, but to many it is so new. We have to be ambassadors to that. You're a shining star, Jason. A shining oh, star. Awesome.